Some more reports are coming out about the Toronto Blue Jays' pursuit of some notable free agents. We're going to circle in on Cody Bellinger, Jock Peterson, Reese Hoskins, all those guys that are going to help improve this Blue Jays ball club heading into 2024. So we'll break that down and much more on this episode of Jays Digest. up Jays fans I'm your host Peter Briones alongside host Nick Goss uh, thank you for sticking with us with that off day yesterday that we took but we're back today and we got some news to discuss considering some free agents that might be on their way to Toronto they're not out on the Cody Bellinger sweepstakes but we don't know how heavily involved they are in on him uh, there's Jock Peterson of course Reese Hoskins JD Martinez Jorge Soler all those guys that have been circled on the Blue Jays radar we're going to break them down on this episode but Nick a a lot of news has been coming out over the past few hours or the past couple of days regarding these guys and definitely some uh, some names that could help this Blue Jays team heading into next season in the power department, which is something that they really struggled in last year. Yeah, moves have yet to be made still, but a quick reminder before we get into it to hit the subscribe button, about 70% of you guys aren't subscribed and <clears throat> my voice is better, but it's still not fully, so bear with me with that. Now, Peter, let's start with this one here and this is from Ken Rosenthal and it basically highlights the fact that the Jays obviously among other teams, are maybe pursuing Cody Bellinger even after they re-signed Kevin Kiermaier to play center field, and that that won't stop them from potentially pursuing Bellinger going forward to help give Vladdy some days as the DH. What are your thoughts on this? It's very interesting. This is like the second or third time now in the past week we've heard about them pursuing Bellinger. Uh, it's very, very interesting, and uh, I don't know. It's a, it's a bit strange. It seems like no one's trying to reach Scott Boris at $200 million, and maybe that's an advantage for the Jays. Yeah, it might be. And two hundred million is a big price tag for fairly wild card type of player like Cody Bellinger. You're not exactly sure what you're gonna get out of him. Uh, just for the simple fact that he's he's had an MVP season, but he struggled in, in multiple years as well. And then he's kind of gone back to that same player that he showed he was in the MVP year last season, but still the power it may never be the same that we saw when he won that award and in his rookie year as well. He had thirty two plus home runs he's never really gotten back to that total ever since he injured his shoulder he looked healthy last season he's still a five tool player if i've ever seen one he's a guy who can throw the ball with with great ferocity out there in the outfield he's got big time power he stole over 20 bases last year as well which is a new element that he added to his game he's an all-around guy and and he's someone that can do a lot of different things on that ball field and Adding him, even though you did re-sign Kevin Kiermaier to that one-year deal, I think it ups Kevin Kiermaier's value because he can act as more of that fourth outfielder that we thought he was going to be last year when the Blue Jays signed him to that one-year deal. Look, Kevin Kiermaier, I like him as a player, but we've been very vocal about the Blue Jays needing an upgrade in that position. Center field was very good defensively for them last year between Dalton Varsho and Kevin Kiermaier, but the power and the offensive output just wasn't where it needed to be, and and I think we're making a big deal out of this because of the struggles that Dalton Varsho was having as the everyday left fielder. You want your left fielder to be okay defensively, to be adequate defensively, but you want him to mash, and Dalton Varsho was fantastic defensively. It was like another center fielder out there patrolling the left field position, but he didn't have that offensive dynamo type of season that we wanted to see out of him. And and we didn't exactly get the season that we thought we would be getting out of Dalton Varsho the minute that the Blue Jays traded for him. So it, it was disappointing in that regard. I believe he'll bounce back. But Kevin Kiermaier last year, in my opinion, was best case scenario. He hit 270. He didn't eclipse the 10 home run mark, but he came up with some big hits and drove in the only run in the playoffs, uh, in the two playoff games that the Blue Jays had. So he, he was the least of their worries, but you still need a little bit more. And I know he was your nine hitter. I know he's playing a premium defensive position and he's playing it at a high level. But Dalton Varsho is going to be your center fielder in the future unless you sign Cody Bellinger here. So uh, you got to get a little bit more offense out of that position, and Cody Bellinger would definitely help with that. And having Kevin Kiermaier swap in for, uh, let's say, George Springer once every three days or, or, or two times, three times a week, I mean, that's that's huge, and that helps keep him healthy, and maybe that helps keep George Springer uh, bat hot as well. So th there's multiple different p possibilities they can explore here, but 
I like uh, I like Cody Bellinger still to be a Blue Jay. And we've seen Kevin Kiermaier say that <clears throat> Ross Atkins hasn't guaranteed him a starting spot next season at all. So, I mean, what you said is true, and hopefully they can, again, <clears throat> I'm not sure how realistic Cody Bellinger is, but it's someone definitely to keep an eye on. And I don't really want necessarily Kevin Kiermaier to be our everyday outfielder every single day, especially against left-handed pitching. And the report kind of ends saying that the Cubs are most likely to reunite with Cody Bellinger, which makes a bit of sense there as well. Peter, there's another report that just dropped today from Ken Rosenthal. It's a specific piece about the Blue Jays, basically saying that once upon a time they pursued Otani, and now their preference has remained a left-handed hitter. Peterson fits that description, although reports are saying Peterson prefers the West Coast. Resigning Belt could make sense. The problem is the only hitters the Jays have signed are Connor Falefa and Kiermaier. Neither is an offensive force. They could lose Chapman, their third baseman last season. Belt or even Peterson might not be enough. Do you have thoughts on this? Again, I think Jorge Soler is the guy, and there might be a new report about that from John Heyman we'll cover later in another video, but it seems like they have Soler circled on their map as the favorite, and it makes total sense, especially if Jock Peterson isn't wanting to come east to Toronto. Yeah, it does make sense, and obviously Jorge Soler is the number one target that we have circled on our radars, Nick, but... Yeah, the Jays got worse than they were last year offensively, and and that's because they're about to lose Matt Chapman. There hasn't been much traction on that front. I doubt that they're going to bring him back, especially for the price tag that has been attached to his name. Uh, but the Jays, you could argue that they absolutely need one bat, and that's true. But I'm going to argue that they need one bat, uh, two bats. They need two bats here, and and we don't know where the third base production is going to come from. Is it going to be a mix of Connor Falefa, maybe some rookies coming up like Arelvis Martinez, Addison Barger? There's a ton of different possibilities that the Blue Jays can explore at that position, but you're missing 150 plus games that you got to fill. You're missing close to 20 home runs and close to 65 to 70 RBIs. Cause even in a down year, that's close to what Matt Chapman was going to give you on a year in year out basis. And you're not going to have that anymore. And great defense as well. I, Isaiah kind of for can kind of fill that void, but he's still not going to be as good of a defender at third base as Matt Chapman was. So there's a ton of different possibilities here for the Blue Jays to explore, but I think they need to add two bats. And Cody Bellinger and Jorge Soler, I think that's a very good offseason for them, objectively speaking. But you got to do more, and you got to find ways to fill those holes that have been left behind in pending free agents. And that's Matt Chapman, Brandon Belt. So the Jays need to add two bats here. And, and the two guys that I have are Cody Bellinger and Jorge Soler. And they were about to spend $700 million on Shohei Otani. Obviously, we know it didn't come to fruition. And we know that you're not going to get the same amount of revenue back if you bring in Soler and Bellinger because they're just not as marketable and they're not as popular and they're not as franchise-altering as Shohei Otani would have been. But still, you know, you can make a dent in that $700 million and bring in those two guys for about 250 260 and that's still a really good offseason, in my opinion. I think you get better offensively for bringing those two guys, and your team gets significantly better if you have those two in your lineup every day. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see. Jack Peterson obviously had a great season last year, but if he doesn't want to play in the East Coast, maybe Jorge Soler is the option. But that'll wrap it up. Let us know in the comments who you want out of all these guys, and are you happy with Kevin Kiermaier if he ends up being our starter? Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.